I earned my master's degree in chemistry from University of Delhi with an experience of 7 years in teaching. I will be mentoring you most parts and topics in chemistry and clearing your concepts and misconceptions regarding chemistry. Hi friends, today we will be studying a very interesting topic and a new topic of coordination chemistry. So what is coordination chemistry? Coordination chemistry is nothing but the chemistry of coordinate compounds. Now, these coordinate compounds are very important. They are all around us. It's in us, it's in the plants, it's everywhere. We use them on the daily basis in industries or in the household. So hemoglobin, as you know, the red color pigment of your blood is a coordinate compound and the chlorophyll the green color pigment in plants is also a coordinate compound similarly with vitamin b12 and there are many more examples now this coordinate compounds are very important we use them in the industry for making many solvents and many compounds also they are the hot topic in the research right now in the field of chemistry okay so today we'll be targeting the first theory ever given by a scientist on the coordination compounds. It was given by Alfred Werner in 1893 and won the, won the Nobel Prize in 1913 for his work. So we'll be studying what were his postulates and how he interviewed, study the interesting story behind, you know, his theory. So the first postulate he said, is that a central metal atom satisfy the two valencies one is the primary valency which is the because of the which is satisfied by the charge and the another valency is because of the ligands which donate you know the lone pair into the metal orbitals he didn't know at that moment but he called it secondary valency and primary valency which is ionizable okay so these are his the these were his postulates now how did he show the compound okay. so we'll take an example so what are these primary valencies and the secondary valencies so i'll be taking this example here we go so this is a normal coordinate compound in which our primary valency is what is 3 because 3 chloride ions are outside the coordination sphere and what is primary valency so this is primary valency is 3 and the secondary valency is 6 so how we know that primary valency is 3 and the secondary valency is 6 for that you should know the postulates he gave so the postulate said that so the postulate said that the primary valency is satisfied for the charge now what's the charge on our molecule on the cobalt here which is our central metal atom it's plus three so that's why the primary valency is came out to be 3 and how many ligands are there how many lone pairs are donated to the central metal atom are 6 okay now we'll do another interesting example it's CO NH3 5 Cl Cl2 okay now you will be thinking that the primary valency should here be you know 2 and uh, secondary valency should be 6 which is you know completely wrong that's the misconcept we talk about here that's what we'll be studying in the TG campus so now that we have to as I told as the Vernon told the primary valency is satisfied by the charge now the charge on cobalt you know it's plus 3 how we know that let's say on cobalt it's x for ammonia because it's a neutral molecule so we don't have any charge on chlorine it's minus one and it's equal to the charge of plus two why because these two there are two chlorine atoms and one chlorine atom has a charge of negative one so obviously two will have negative two and this is the cation so it will have the charge of 
plus 2. Now, so the charge on cobalt came out to be plus 3 and that's why the primary valency is still 3 while the secondary valency is 6. Okay. How we'll show these diagrams of all these molecules? We show them in this way. For the primary valency, we show by a dotted line while for the secondary valency is represented by a wedge line, a wedge bold line. So, I'll be making the for uh, making the structure of these molecules for you. Cobalt. And you can show the primary valency by anywhere. You, we can write it anywhere. We can show it by the dotted line and we can write them anywhere. Anywhere you want to, we can write it. Now, how will it represent the structure of the second molecule? We show it like this. We show it by both wedge and you know dotted line and all the secondary valency are shown by this and you can show the final primary valency anywhere you want to. So just like this example we had here we'll be dealing with such examples in future as well in the in TG campus. So, for further classes, we'll be meeting you soon. So, bye.